business 3.0 is potentially so profound for most businesses and the fact it's got the, it's got the capability of changing business models. It should be owners and CEOs of businesses and, and finance directors. It's, it should be people who can change the culture of a business, change the strategy of a business, and even the, change the business model of a business. And it should be very, very senior people, perhaps as well as business, as business owners. We have a saying uh, in, in our business that 1% of businesses know how to know what they don't know. Um, those are businesses that can afford McKinsey's as consultants. Four percent of businesses know what they don't know, and ninety-five percent of businesses don't know what they don't know. Um, this all came from the Donald Rumsfeld quote about known unknowns. Um, what if you if you feel that you're in the ninety-five percent of the business? If you feel that you don't know what's on the horizon, you should come and have a look because we will we will give you a very very good view of what's coming down the stream in the next two to three years that could change your business. Um, to give you an idea, to, just to, to leave that one hanging in midair, um, Eric Schmidt, who's the chief exec of Google, um, at a Paris pref, press conference a couple of months ago, was talking about Kreiter's Law. Kreiter's Law is um, about the exponential growth of, of hard drives um, in comparison and parallel with Murphy's Law. And that law predicts that by 2019, your iPod will have enough storage on it for 85 years of video storage which is an extraordinarily large amount, and it's got some extraordinary ramifications as well, because essentially you could record your whole life. You could record everything you say, everything that you do going forward. That's got, it's got such amazing implications going forward. Well, probably the best thing I can do is explain about Web 2.0 and how that actually worked. With Web 2.0, um, especially around 2003, what we found for many businesses is it gave us the ability to expand and scale our marketing beyond just local reach or beyond just our existing customer base. So businesses that were local literally could have gone international within a question, a question of a few minutes of sticking an ad on Yahoo or Google. With Business 3.0, what we're saying is that the rate of technology change is that rather than something coming to your business to make it better, then there is some danger that what actually happens is it's such disruptive technology that what will happen is that you will probably need to change your business to take account of what's happening on the web, what's happening with Google, and what's happening with technology. What we're seeing is a rate of technology change here which is just enormous. Let me try and illustrate this with some examples. Um, for example, you, some of you may have heard of Google Checkout. Google Checkout came out about uh, two, months in, two months ago in the UK. And essentially what it is, it's an electronic wallet for consumers to make transactions on the internet that much easier. If you use PayPal, it's extremely similar to PayPal, but being Google, it will be probably 10 times bigger. Now the implications for this are as follows, is that when you, when you use a Google Checkout wallet on a, on a, on a vendor's site, an e-tailer's site, for the consumer it's a wonderful experience because you go in, you click the Google Checkout trolley and that's it, the transaction is done, Google Checkout will fill, fill in all the appropriate delivery fields. But what Google Checkout also does is it masks your personal contact information, i.e. your email address, from the e-tailer which is very scary because that means for all e-tailers, if they use Google Checkout, it means that they are only selling to first-time customers ever. And we know the cost of acquiring customers in, the, in this world today. So what we've got with Google Checkout is we've got a, a very disruptive piece of technology that's very good for consumers and actually turns e-tailers into wholesalers because you can't have a relationship and you can't get that customer to return no matter how sticky you are because you don't know who they are. That's one example. Another example, was um, I was mailed in, a mail from California last night, a friend over there, um, and he came, he came to me with a site called It's Beautiful. And It's Beautiful is so astonishingly simple. It's a site where you go to, and it's a, an online flower shop, except rather than selling flowers, they are giving away virtual flowers. And these are computer-created, uh, crafted uh, flowers, and they're extraordinarily beautiful. That's a, that's a good thing, and you, you can email them completely free of charge to anybody you want to. The best thing about it is, is that the recipient is able to take that flower and put it into a, gre a virtual greenhouse where they can water it and keep it forever. Now, if that doesn't change the flower business, this is a very simple e-tail flower business, the interflora model of this will, I don't know what will. And that will catch on, it'll be competitors, and it will create its own market. That is disruptive technology. That's business 3.0. Another example is uh, YouTube. 
uh, this morning announced that it was going to be selling video advertising. Well, video advertising is the equivalent of a TV ad. But the way they're going to do it is going to disrupt the advertising business because when you click on a YouTube video, what you will get when you see the ad is you'll get a screen space around 20% of that screen space will be this video ad occurring and, and being pictured to, in, in picture. If you don't click it inside of 10 seconds, it goes away. Therefore, it's a non-disruptive approach for the consumer. But what Google has now done with this through YouTube is actually turned TV advertising in pay-per-click. And at the moment, if you want to do a TV ad, you pay on a cost per thousand model, a cost per view model. And that dramatically changes and disrupts the, the advertising business accordingly. So that was, that's, that's two events just in one morning. Well, I think there's a bit of a common misconception about both of these sites and Bebo and several of the others as well and the fact that they are exclusively for kids. Actually, several of them, and particularly Facebook, is starting to show a, some grounds for being a very good business networking site. And, and as an experiment, of the, as experiment with this, yesterday morning, I signed up for a uh, Facebook account and Facebook gives you the option to upload all of your business contacts or just contacts from Microsoft Outlook. And I've got about 440 or, or so. And what it did was I uploaded them and to my astonishment, 93 of my business contacts already had Facebook accounts. And as a direct result of that, within a, question, a, few, a few minutes, I joined a couple of networks that I didn't know existed and met people that I actually might be useful to me in my network going forward. So these are fantastic business development opportunity networks, but you have to be very careful with them because if you are overt and you try and push your product or yourself, then people on Facebook will actually will show, will, will steer away from you. But absolutely, they are networking opportunities, virtual networking opportunities, very powerful. Potentially, for many, many, many businesses, it's going to cost you tens of thousands of pounds in lost business if you don't start adapting to new technology. Um, the cost of actually adapting your business probably will be a fraction of actually trying to repair your business once technology started to take over in this world. Um, so, yes, it's going to cost you thousands of pounds and you should think about doing it sooner rather than later. if I'm allowed an advertisement here, um, my business, Disrupted Horizon, we have a, something called a Web 3.0 health check. And what we do is we put together a report on your business. We take a look at it from an external, from an outsider's perspective, and we'll come back to you and we'll, we'll tell you in the area, the critical areas, where your business has got an opportunity or got a problem or you've got a competitive set that you're not understanding, etc. Or there are many, many uh, web marketing agencies out there that can actually tell you uh, or give you an idea of, of where your business might fail in the future. Clearly, they are a little bit more biased than perhaps we might be.